in this case, uh, look at uh, this. Uh, uh, the vertical scale is very small. Uh, the ocean yield from uh, these, all these ketones are uh, about uh, one order magnitude lower than, uh, than the yields obtained with ts one zero right. However, you see the similar uh, dependence on the ring side. Uh, the, cyclic, uh, the yield of uh, cyclic uh, hectanon oxygen it was the largest. So uh, I don't know the reason uh, why the, uh, this why the reactivity of cyclohexanol is so high. Anyway, uh, the dependence this this dependence uh, reflects the uh, simply reflects the uh, relative reactivity of these cyclic ketones uh, without the uh, strict restriction. Of course, uh, so when the TS1 was more active in this uh, reaction, of course, the surface area of TS1 is much higher uh, than that of ambulance silicon titania. About, this is about five times as high as uh, this, this sample. And uh, we have a similar uh, silicate titanium ratio, but the activity, activity difference is much uh, higher than the difference of such uh, area. So the titanium, the inherent activity of titanium silica, uh, uh, titanium site on TS1 is uh, higher than uh, that on amular silica titanium. Because uh, cycle, uh, the size of cycloheptanol is uh, pretty big compared to the uh, uh, size of channel of TS1, which uh, this is this, uh, this is uh, this has a MP5 structure, which means uh, the channel diameter is only about 5.5 angstrom. So you might wonder uh, the, this reaction occurs really inside the zero right. So we uh, carried out a shape selective poisoning uh, experiment by using the amines of different sizes. This bulky amines, triphenyl amine, cannot enter into the zero right channels because it has a very, uh, it is too big. Uh, this amine can, uh, maybe can, uh, can, maybe can enter into uh, the channels of TS1. Of course, uh, for Amorous silica titania, whose uh, average diameter is about uh, 200 angstrom, uh, both amine can enter into the inside. You see, uh, by adding trifling amine, uh, which can uh, poison the only external surface of uh, TS1, there is a uh, no significant decrease in the oxygen yield. But if you add uh, this amine, uh, the oxygen yield was severely returned. Uh, and of course, uh, if you add, uh, for the case of, uh, in the case of monastic titania, uh, the oxygen yield was uh, severely returned uh, by uh, either enemy. So we, from this result, we have concluded that uh, may, uh, the reaction, uh, the activity of TS1 is, uh, is mainly, uh, mainly uh, due to the inside of the zero. We, uh, we prepared several more samples by uh, using uh, this uh, alkoxycinesol. You can, you can change the uh, uh, chemical composition, you can change the uh, temperature program, uh, or you can change the uh, uh, mixing procedure, or you can change the hydrolysis condition. So you, you can obtain uh, uh, similar samples with, with varying uh, crystal size and varying uh, silica titanium ratio. And, and you can also uh, have a 
big crystals by adding tetraarch ethyl ammonium hydroxide to tetra TDOH. This is a method developed by French people. And you can obtain uh, far very deep uh, crystals by using uh, so-called colloidal series. I'm showing uh, the typical same samples. By using colloidal seeker, you obtain the very, uh, we have obtained very, very large, large crystals of uh, coffee shape. In the case of uh, alkoxide method, uh, typical alkoxide method, we have obtained a very uh, aggregates of very small zeolite uh, particles. This particles is uh, about uh, 0.3 micrometers. But it is very hard to uh, it is very hard to estimate and calculate uh, the average or the average uh, particle diameter of zeolite, especially for very small crystallites. So we adopted uh, the method developed by Olson and Hart of model. Uh, this method uh, is uh, to measure the time take to reach 30% of the saturation of all the xylem on uh, zeolite. This uh, zero time is, should be proportional to the uh, square of R divided by diffusivity. R is a crystal variable. I'm showing here uh, the dependence of uh, tower number of uh, oxygen, oxygen if uh, plotted against uh, T0.3, the uh, diffusivity factor. You see here who are the uh, samples with very short T0.3. You have uh, then the uh, pretty high tower number. For the samples with a uh, Large uh, with long T uh, zero three. That means uh, we have uh, we got uh, very large crystals. Uh, the, the tower number decreased with an uh, increase in the T zero point three. So in this case, in over beyond this range, the reactivity was determined by the reflectivity. But for the other we did scatter in the data of this range. This means uh, for these samples, uh, having uh, the crystal size of about uh, below uh, under 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 micrometer, uh, we have we, we don't have any diffusion limitation. Uh, the, uh, the reaction is not governed by divisional factors. Then. What uh, governs uh, the activity of these samples? We can uh, estimate the uh, uh, concentration of titanium uh, by using a infrared spectrum. Uh, if we introduce a titanium into the framework, we obtain the uh, very characteristic, characteristic band uh, at 960. The, the assignment of this band is uh, still in dispute, but any, any, anyway, this band is uh, believed to be proportional to the uh, concentration of titanium uh, into the NFI framework. So we, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, estimate the relative concentration of titanium into the same work by uh, this uh, relative intensity. Uh, the, this uh, band, 550 degrees uh, Kaiser band is uh, assigned to the uh, vibration due to the silica framework of NFI theorem. You see, uh, for the samples one to six, uh, you have a, you have a, we have a 
pretty good correlation between the relative uh, concentration of titanium and oxygen yield. But for well, these two samples, you, you might remember this sample has a, a very, uh, is a very small, uh, very big crystal. Uh, the deviation is very large. This means uh, for these uh, samples, the uh, reaction is governed by the region. And the, uh, the, in, uh, the active size of titanium inside the light is not used effectively uh, because of a very deep research size. So time is running out. Uh, I'm showing here the conclusion of my work. Uh, the reactivity of ketones over this one shows that uh, so this shows that cyclohexanone, cyclopentanone, cyclohexanone, cyclohexanone. The active sites of TS1 for this reaction are mostly inside the molecules. Uh, diffusion of cyclohexanone or its oxygen has been found to play an important role in the amortization when the TS1 crystal is larger than 1.5, but this is very uh, not, not precise, uh, 1.5, but something like that, micrometer uh, and broader the characters. For the TS1 crystals smaller than 0.3 micrometer, the amortization activity is determined by the number of active signs presented in the direct paper. Thank you very much for your attention. John Harmer, Iron Products. Many years ago, in about 1978, we did some work on kind of the approximation, but we used oxygen and we used silica as a catalyst, it was a more facilica. And our observations were not very different from your water. In other words, we, we saw that the cyclopeptinone gave a very high yield using oxygen as the oxygen. Now that's a more facilica, and so uh, I wonder whether the, uh, the ring size that you talk about and the shape selectivity that you infer uh, may may not be applicable in this case. Have, have you done some molecular modeling and, and uh, estimated uh, whether these structures, because you're dealing with saturated rings which can undergo a good deal of distortion, whether they can be contorted to fit into these same pores. And so maybe the differences that you're seeing in reactivity are due more to issues of stability and overall yield of reaction and not, not to kinetic. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that is a very uh, difficult question to answer. Uh, because uh, uh, well, if we make the model, uh, the cyclohexanone is, is too big to enter the devil in, in a uh, general sense. Uh, also, I found uh, <laughs> I found uh, one, cy not, not cyclohexanone, uh, cyclohexanone, just a cy cyclohexane hydrocarbon. It's very hard to enter into the oil. We can estimate the uh, absorption amount uh, by using the, uh, by using uh, one, three, five, two, thrice isopropyl benzene as a uh, solvent. In the for the hydrocarbon, the cyclohexane ring is very too big to enter into the oil. But for the uh, for the ketone, maybe ketone is uh, about the same size. It can enter into the oil. Mm -hmm. We confirmed it can enter into the oil uh, uh, of any of any structure. Anyhow, uh, <coughs> the molecule with the similar size, uh, with the molecule with the same size, one can enter into the oil and the other cannot, virtually uh, can't enter the oil. So we, we, we think we have to uh, consider uh, the, uh, some uh, affinity uh, on the the right walls, because uh, cyclic has uh, uh, some polar group, 
and the other cycle is attained uh, doesn't have. So anyway, uh, as I told you, uh, uh, most of the cycle has that hexano reaction occurs inside the light, we believe. And, uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, the reactivity. The activity of cyclohexanone is uh, higher than cyclohexanone. The, the reason, I don't know the reason. Okay. Should. Very should. <laughs> How do you think about the reaction mechanism for amalgamation? That uh, ammonia first reacted with hydrogen peroxide to yield hydrogen. Hydroxyl amine. Then hydroxyl amine reacted with ketone. If the reaction uh, proceeded by this mechanism, uh, the ketone don't need to enter the zero uh, power. Uh, actually, I have done the experiment uh, to investigate the reaction mechanism. But people, I don't know the, the mechanism. Some people uh, claim that. Uh, such a thing, say, imin can, uh, imin was first <coughs> prepared and then it can be oxidized, it, it should be oxidized to the site of But I'm sorry, I don't, uh, I can't answer the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.